Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Today we're working on Module 5, Lesson Number 9, and today we're using the area model and division to show the equivalence of fractions. So I'm going to do about two and a half problems tonight, and hopefully that'll get you started as you work on your homework. Let's take a look at one of those first. Let's take a look at problem number one. Problem number 1a has sort of been done for us, so maybe we'll look at that a little bit, but I want to take a look at problem 1b. Let's take a look at the directions. Compose the shaded regions, shaded fractions, into larger fractional units. Express the equivalent fractions in a number sentence using division. The first one has been done for you. So let's take a look at the first one. They did 1a, and even though this originally might be 2 out of 4, right? That's 2 fourths, 2 shaded blocks out of 4 similar blocks. Um, we know that we could group those two together, the shaded ones. We could pair up like that and like this. And we could, if we thought of that as one group out of two, we would have one half. And sure enough, we can divide two by two and four by two and get one half, an equivalent fraction. So if we think about the way we've been building with area models to build equivalent fractions, in this case, it's almost like we're erasing this line, right? In our previous models, we would have started off with one half and we would have added this line to create the equivalent fraction two fourths. In this case, we're doing the opposite. We're starting with the more complicated one where we have four parts and we're sort of erasing this line uh, through division to create just two parts, one, two. All right, we should be able to do the same thing for one B. Let's see what we start off with. Let's see, we've got four, looks like four shaded uh, parts. So that, let's see, we'll go ahead and get four shaded parts. Four out of a total of, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four out of eight shaded parts. Excellent. And what could we do? What could we group together uh, to make a larger fractional unit? Let's see. Well, it looks like we have these two pieces, right? We could maybe group this together, these four parts together, and these four parts together. So let's do that. I'm going to do that with a red pen, just like they did before here. So we could group those four together and group these four together. And if we did that, we would end up with basically one shaded part out of two. In other words, one half. And now the question is, does the division get us from one point to another? And I think that it does, because if we did the same, if we did a process to get from four to one, we would have to take four and divide it by four. And of course, if we divide by four in the numerator, we need to do the same in the denominator, and eight divided by four is in fact two. So we've just done the reverse of what we've done in previous lessons, and we've taken four eighths and grouped those parts together and made it into just one half of a larger fractional unit. Okay, let's take a look at another problem. Let's take a look at problem number two and read together. Compose the shaded fractions into larger fractional units. Express the equivalent fractions in a number sentence using division. Okay, well, let's take a look at what we have first. It looks like we have one, two shaded parts, so I'm going to say that that's two out of how many total? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, out of ten parts total. So it looks like we have two tenths. And how can we group our shaded regions together, our shaded and unshaded regions together? Well, I think we could group these two, and these two, and these two, and these two, and these two. So I'm going to use my red pen to go ahead and group those. There's two, there's two, there's two, there's two, and there's two. And if we did looked at it that way, we looked at the, our new groupings, uh, which are twice as big as the old groupings. Let's see, how many of those are shaded? Well, let's see, only one of those is shaded out of five, right? We have just one shaded group out of one, two, three, four, five shaded groups. So the question is then, is that, does it hold up when we apply our division? Well, to get from two to one, we would need to divide two by two, which is, makes sense because we are making groups of two. And we would need to divide 10 by two as well. And sure enough, two divided by two is one and 10 divided by 2 is 5. And again, just like in previous lessons, we've taken the larger fractional, I'm sorry, the smaller fractional units, with their, which are more numerous, 10 total, We've and we've gone ahead and done some groupings, so we have half as many of them as before, because we've added 2 to each of our groupings. Half as many of them as before is the same as dividing by 2. 2 divided by 2, we've come up with an equivalent fraction of 1 out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1 fifth. Awesome. Let's do one more. And in this one, we're only going to do part of the problem because I want you to go ahead and solve the rest of this problem on your own. Number 3a, in the first area model, show 4 eighths. In the second area model, show 6 twelfths. Show how both, fraction can, can be, 
both fractions can be composed or renamed as the same unit fraction. So let's take a look at 4 eighths. We need to do 4 eighths in here. Now there's a lot of different ways to do 4 eighths. I'm just going to do this one because it's the one that first comes to mind. Let's see. So that divides us into 8 parts. And I want to go ahead and shade 1, 2, 3, 4 of them. I'm not going to do the second one. The second one, I'm going to have you do the 6 twelfths over here. I'm just going to tell you how I'm going to group uh, my units over here on the left-hand side. I'm going to grab my red pen because I think we could group these four together and then leave these other four together. So I'm going to end up grouping mine like this and like this. I'm not going to tell you exactly how it goes, but I'm going to say over here to the side that 4 eighths is what I started off with. And it looks to me like I'm going to get to one half because when I did my groupings, I ended up with one shaded area out of two shaded areas or one half. So I'm not going to tell you how we would do the division. In fact, I'll just put that up here. And I'm not going to tell you how I would uh, generate the second area model of six twelfths over here. I'll leave that to you as well. And then I'm certainly going to leave part B for you. So I think I've done well, maybe not quite half of this problem uh, with you. And I'll leave the other half, or a little bit more than half, for you to do on your own. So thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. I'll see you again next time.